Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Come on, if you can do better than that, praise the Lord, everybody. Let's stand to our feet and worship God. How many people are truly grateful for being here this morning? I mean, you really celebrate God for all he's done this week. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget forever. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free.
Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Is there any witnesses in the house for, to that effect? Before we get started on our prayer request, this is the month of June, right? Is there any June birthdays in the house? If you're a June birthday, stand up. Let us let us recognize you. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's sing to him. Happy birthday. start off by reading a portion of Psalms 27 if you can and will would you stand to your feet please for the reading of the scripture the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even mine enemy and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though it hosts should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above, above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. You may be seated. On our prayer request list this morning uh, that we're going to be lifting up, I will read the names. Also, you may be preparing to lift up your prayer request. Amen. I know there's someone in your life that needs prayer and it may just be you. Amen. Sister Vicki Yeoman is home from the hospital. She is recuperating. And to God be the glory, she is in the audience. Prayer changes things. Sister Joyce Hemphill, she is asking uh, prayer for her aunt, Miss Ivory Marie Butcher. Uh, she's in a nursing home under hospice care. Sister Doris Woolen, husband, Mr. Sidney Woolen, is at home now recuperating. Sister Alta Terry is still in Falkland Hospital. And it's Sister Diane Frazier is home from New York where she uh, has been assisting her brother. I received another note this morning though that uh, her brother, Mr. Ricky English, uh, he is back in the hospital for a minor medical procedure and should be only a short stay. Amen. Uh, we need to remember in our prayers, Sister Gloria Love, who is back in the hospital. Sister Essie Walker and Mother Clar Clarissa Waters. Uh, seems that Mother Clarissa Waters is temporarily in rehab at Presbyterian Hospital. Also, uh, Sister Brenham, Sister Bobby Brenham, has asked for prayer for herself as well. Amen? Those are our prayer requests. I'm sorry.
sorry, I have one more here. Sister Joyce Ware. She is asking for prayer again for two of her relatives, her great niece, Sister Brianna Mangus, and her nephew, Marcus Small. And I'm going to ask that Reverend Boynes would come and pray for us this morning. And you lift up your prayer request and let's prepare to praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Somebody say the blood still works. The blood still works.
Sound like somebody believes the blood still works. <laughs> Amen. I'm a living witness that the blood still works. Amen. After all of these years, down through all of these generations, the blood, the shedded blood of Jesus Christ is still working. Amen. Good morning, Greater Golden Gate. Those of you who are assembled with us this morning and to those of you who might be viewing our services, God has blessed us to see another beautiful and blessed day. Amen. He didn't have to do it. Amen. But he saw enough grace and favor in us whereby he touched us this morning and woke us up to be able to see and witness another beautiful and blessed day. And we ought to give him thanks for that this morning. Amen. Certainly because without him, we couldn't do it. We could not make it. Amen. With respect to our uh, pastor and, and first lady and their absence on this morning, they're in a place called Camilla. Texas, and, and somebody asked me about it this morning, and I'm glad I had to kind of look it up a little bit, <laughs> but it's down near Houston on the Galveston Bay Area, and uh, they're there celebrating their 45th class reunion, amen, that's where, that's where he and our uh, First Lady of this morning, they are celebrating their class reunion, and the pastor is a keynote speaker, and, and when I heard that, I said, well, Kima will never be the same <laughs> when he leaves from there this morning, amen, they're, they'll be traveling back this evening, and certainly we want to pray that uh, they have a safe travel back home, amen, but no. Kima will never be the same again. Uh, probably turn that resort area upside down. <laughs> Amen. He's just that kind of preacher. Amen. So happy to have each of you here this morning and to our ministerial staff and to our music staff. God certainly has blessed us once again another week. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's going to be that time of the year where it's a little bit warmer. Uh, but that's Texas, though. Amen. That's Texas, though. So we just need to keep our air conditioned in tip-top condition. Amen. To keep us cool on the inside. Amen. Now, just a few observations that uh, we would like to make at this time. Dr. Blackburn, where are you? Okay, okay, all right. Would you come at this time, please? So good morning. Good morning. You guys know when they called me to get up. <laughs> I'm not just walking around just because I like being a teacher. I'm just walking close to the people that I know as an envelope that says scholarship fund. I know you have an envelope in front of you that says scholarship fund. I'm coming to the back now. I know you guys can sit back here so nobody's going to come and talk to you. <laughs> reach, for that, reach for that envelope that says scholarship fund. Center row, center group. Y'all got me back in the back over there? Okay, I need everyone to pull out an envelope. Pull it out, just make me feel good. Just pull it out and just wave it up. <laughs> just wave it up. Okay, fan me, fan me, fan me. Okay, <laughs> now I want you to make it rain. I want you to put some money in that envelope. Oh, you've already shown me your envelope now. You've already fanned yourself because you know it's going to be hard to put that money in that envelope. So keep on fanning yourself. This is the year 2022. We have five students that are graduating. A whole lot of money needs to go out to those five Amen. students. Amen. You know the cost of a college is not cheap. I need you to go into this envelope that you've been fanning yourself with, at least put $22 in it. Hmm? 
Can you remember how much I'm asking you for? The year 22, 2022. Put $22 in here. And for all you big ballers, all you big ballers, for all you big ballers, I need you to do 122. You got it. All that crimson, I know you got it. So, so, for, so for all you big ballers, and everybody who's been saving to become a big baller, here's your chance to put in 122. But everybody that fan a little while ago, so I see somebody just counting that money out. Ooh, I like that. She's just making it right. She said, let me get one, let me get two, let me get 22. There you go. $22, all I'm asking for. For the big ballers and all the shot callers, I'm asking for 122. Amen? Amen. Amen again? Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I know you're going to do it. Thank you now. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Blackburn. Thank you so much. And, and he, he might make a good politician speech, too. He, he, he knows how to pull that energy. <laughs> Amen. But thank you so much. And naturally, we want to, and we're going to help our college graduates uh, who are, are graduating, uh, are high school graduates who are graduating uh, on this year. Also, uh, let us not forget uh, our diaper drive, which is being sponsored by the Onyx Jewel. It's called Supporting the I Look Like Love Diaper Pantry. Amen. I Look Like Love Diaper Pantry. And if you're not going to bring any diapers or can't get any diapers, they will accept your money. Amen. Monetary donations are also welcome. Our student ministries will have Zoom get together today at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. student ministries will have their Zoom get together. Also, our senior mission is still receiving ads for our North Texas District Association Touch Tomorrow Today contestant Nyla Knox, amen, and, and she received a beautiful uh, gift on last Sunday, amen, from the North Texas District Association uh, in her graduation, but we want to help her win this contest, amen, we want to help her win uh, this contest. Let us not forget uh, our Zoom Wednesdays, uh, prayer, praise, and study. Uh, at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Our hat team is in charge of the prayer service and praise part of the service on, on Wednesday. And next Wednesday would be the turquoise jewel. So join us by Zoom or either by telephone uh, in our Wednesday's prayer, praise, and study. Deacon William did a beautiful job on Wednesday. Amen. And that's every Wednesday we have a good time in our PPS uh, services. Vacation Bible School will be done uh, virtually this year, starting Monday, uh, June 13th through Wednesday, June 15th, on Zoom at 7 p.m. in the evening. Our theme for this year is Healing Faith. And our theme scripture is Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 through 22. Healing faith, that is the theme for our vacation Bible school, which will be held by Zoom uh, on this year. June 19th, and Juneteenth, amen. Our uh, June 19th celebration, it also falls on Father's Day, uh, which is the third Sunday. And that day, we invite all of our Greater Golden Gate members to honor the fathers of our church and lunch with us, and we'll have lunch with us and celebrate the first official national Juneteenth holiday all on the same day. Amen. Amen. June 19th. Amen. It's Father's Day and also... Uh, uh, our June 19th celebration day. Uh, and it says on here, now we're going to have some catered barbecue. So please sign up uh, at the table in the foyer if you plan to eat with us. 
and also we will be wearing our red Martin Luther King t-shirts and the pastor said if you don't have one of those if you got a red shirt wear that amen amen and then on Sunday June 26 we will celebrate our high school graduates and recognition college grads this year the following have received high school diplomas Maya Cheney Carrollton Johnson, Nyla Knox, Michaela Moore, and and my my yeah, help me, Manaya Sparks. Amen. Amen. So we have we have five graduates this year. Amen. And we want to recognize them on June 26 during our morning worship services. Amen. That's all of our uh, observations for this morning. I do have one card that I want to recognize and, and read at this time. It says, a special thank you. Every kindness has a part in bringing joy to someone's heart. It's sometimes easy to forget that there are nice people out there doing nice things for others. Thanks for being such a special reminder. This is from Sister Jean LeBone and Michelle Hawkins. Amen, amen. And after the choir comes back uh, with uh, uh, other selection, I'm, I'm going to say just a word or two this morning. Amen. Just a, just a word or two, not much. Amen. From Philippians chapter 4. Very familiar passage of scripture. Philippians 4. I began reading at the 15th through the 19th verse. And I'll be keying in on the 19th verse. And I'm going to talk about God shall supply all your needs. Amen.
just like God being being that kind of God but he's so good to us that we can't count all of the blessings by the time we thank him for one blessing he turns right back around and bless us again like every time I said Lord I sure thank you then here comes something else. I said, oops, let me get this one in. Thank you. It's just a kind of, just the kind of God we serve. Philippians chapter 4, getting at that 15th verse, it says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Ephodiphus the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice accepting well-pleasing to God. And then Paul says, he said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God shall supply all your needs. Thank you for standing. Uh, any visitors who might have come today to hear our great pastor and preacher, Pastor Jacko, please come back next Sunday. And we're going to pray that the Lord say the same, that he's, that he's here with us on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. God shall supply all your needs. The scriptures say need, but I added an S on to my subject, needs. Uh, let me begin by saying that supplies are very important when you have something to do. It's, it's almost impossible to do what you have to do uh, without the proper supplies. And I'm not, a, I'm not a carpenter. There might be one here in the sanctuary today, but, but I do know that when a carpenter uh, begins to build a house, he has to have certain supplies. Uh, he needs lumber, shingles, a hammer, a saw, nails, a square, a leveler, paintbrush and paint and, and so forth and, and so on uh, to build that house. A carpenter has to have certain supplies when he's going to build a house. And right now, some mothers and babies need supplies of baby formula but they're facing a supply shortage. Well, some babies have, a, have to have a special kind of formula uh, because of their medical 
condition. And, and, and it's sad to say, uh, but living in the richest and most advanced country in the world, there's a supply shortage. We're having to get baby supplies from other countries. It's, it's, it's sad to say. And also, before school starts up again, parents will have to go out and find school supplies for their children. The kids have to have clothes, pencils, paper, computers, you name it so they can do their work in school. I'm just rattling off a few of the areas here where supplies are needed. And even an army uh, can't train or go to war without supplies. You know, they, they have to have food, uh, shelter, and certain military supplies. Uh, the army that, that's in Iraq needs certain supplies and equipment so they can defend their country against the invasion by Russia. They are asking for certain kinds of military supplies so they can defend themselves. And you know, getting the supplies to whoever needs them does not always go smoothly. But some way, somehow, supplies must get to those who need them. And so it is, so it is with the children of God. We need certain supplies to do what God has assigned us to do. And only God, God is the only one who can supply his children with what they need. You know, what, 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 one, what one may need to get the job done that God has assigned them to do, he gives them what they need. And you know, you know, sometime God has to supply his children with supplies like joy, patience, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, more love, and on and on. But no matter what the need may be, God can and will supply the need. In our, in, our, in our text today, when Paul says, God shall supply all your need, uh, he's talking to the church at Philippi. Paul was telling them that God would supply them with what they needed. Uh, but Paul uh, was not talking about God supplying their need in the future. Uh, he was telling them, God shall supply your need right now. For you see, the church, the church that Philippi had supplied Paul's needs. They had given him what he needed. And the giving by this church was sacrificial. This church made a sacrifice to help Paul. And the giving by this church was rewarded and seen by God. God knows what you do. He sees what you do. And if it's rewarding enough, he will reward you. And because of the church at Philippi supplied Paul's need, this turned Paul's thoughts to God who supplied this church with all their needs. And my brothers and sisters, I'm glad to tell you the same God who supplied everything the church at Philippi needed shall supply each one of your needs. And if you will, there are Three things I want to make note of in this little message. Uh, the first thing we want to make note of is that when God supplies your need, it's personal. It's personal. God's supply is personal. Paul says, my God. 
my God. In other words, God was personal to Paul. He was real to Paul. Paul didn't have a long-distance relationship with God. But it was a close and personal relationship. God was close to Paul, and Paul was close to God. And I believe that every blood-bought child of God ought to have a personal and close relationship with God. And that relationship ought to be so close, so real with God, that you can call him my God. Not, 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 not somebody else's God. You know, not, not the God, but my God. For you see, my means personal. My means close. You know, and I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I feel close. I, I feel personal to God. And he feels close and personal to me. So that's why I can call him my God. And that's what, that's what Paul is, is saying here. Every child of God ought to be able to call him my God. Every child of God ought to have a close and personal relationship with God. And when God is your own personal supplier, you can call him my God. And you know, I don't see anything wrong with sounding selfish when you know God is your God. You know, I don't, I don't see anything wrong uh, with sounding selfish when you say, my God. Uh, you know, you can, you can hold your head up high. Or you can stick your chest out and sound selfish when you say, my God. And it's because you feel he's that close to you. It's because you feel he's that personal to you. That's why you can call him, my God. Tell somebody close to you, he's my God. Amen. And, and, and since God is your own personal supplier, he sees to it that whatever you need, he takes care of it personally. He personally takes care of your need. In his personal supply, God got something for loneliness, friendliness, brokenheartedness, Bowed down head, heavy load, feeling unloved, feeling unappreciated. God personalizes your needs. He don't give what you need to somebody else. He gives you what you need and give them what they need. God personalizes your needs. I've come to believe that if you can name it, God can supply it. God can, and I know he will, supply all your needs. He's the great provider. No matter what the need is, the need is not greater than God is able to supply. God can and will meet your needs. And always keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, the pronoun my. You can say it is my God who shall provide for all my needs. My brothers and sisters, you have to be sure that the God who can provide your needs is your God. Yeah, you've got you to make sure that you know God personally that you know him well enough that you can trust and depend on him to meet your need. Well, I'm here to tell you, God's supply is personal and he will supply your needs. Second thing, 
Second thing we want to make note of is that God's supply is providential. It's providential. Some way, somehow. I never ask him how he does it. But God is always providing. Am I right about it? You know, that's why we call him Jehovah Jireh. You know, every, every time you look up, every time you turn around, he's providing. God's supply is continual. He can always provide what you need. Not some of what you need, but all that you need. You, you have the greatest assurance of God's provision. That's why Paul says, my God shall supply. Not might supply. Not maybe he can, not can he do it, but my God shall supply. You have God's assurance that he can do what he says. The words, God shall, not might or maybe, but God shall, takes away any questions about whether you'll receive what you need. Well, I'm here to tell you that God is God all by himself, and beside him there is none other. And since God is God, he's able to provide, and he will provide whatever you need. Now, I didn't come this morning, Reverend Harris, you know, to bust anybody's joy bubble. I didn't come to do that. But there's a difference between need and want. Amen. You know, I hope I didn't bust nobody's bubble. I didn't come here to do that. But there is a difference between need and want. You, you know, sometimes we can want something so bad that we'll convince ourselves that we need it when all the time we don't really need it. You know, we just want it real bad. But God knows the difference between want and need. He may not give you what you want, but he will give you what you need. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a living witness. If you really, really need something, God will provide it. Am I right about it? Have you ever tried him? I'm calling on the name of, Lord, this is what I need. God will provide. In the words, all your need is the great provision. This promise does not refer to physical need only. You know, like food, clothing, and shelter. But it also refers to mental, emotional, social and spiritual needs. God, God doesn't look over, overlook anything that you need and no need is too big or too small. Every need is important to God. But now, for one to get what they need, there may be some lessons to be learned. Lessons like more trust in God, more patience, you know, to get what you need, you know, lesson like more love, more joy, more peace, gentleness, meekness, and self-control. There might be some lesson to be learned before some needs are met. And not only that, but there may be a testimony that needs to be told. Somebody needs to hear how God provides your needs. Somebody needs to hear what God has done for you. Somebody needs to hear what God is doing for you right now. Somebody needs to hear that. There may be some lessons to be learned before some needs are met. 
then God's supply is plentiful. It's plentiful. The scripture says, according to his riches in glory. God is the great resource. God's supplies are plentiful. They're in abundance. In other words, his supplies never run out. All the riches and wealth, all the glory and majesty of heaven is available to meet your need. There's no limit. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about God's supplies running out before he meets your need. No, no. He can give me what I need, give somebody else what they need, and still have enough to give you what you need. God got plenty. He won't run out. Before he gets to you. You know. And if it seems like he's running a little slow. <laughs> running a little late. <laughs> just be patient. Have a little faith. Your blessing is on the way. You know he may not come when you want him to. But he's always on time. God is an on time God. Paul says, according to his riches. And I don't know about you, but I love that. You know, not, not, not out of. You know, not, not out of his riches, but according to his riches. Now, if he had said out of his riches... That would have been like a billionaire. You know, and there's a lot of them these days. And I think the newest one is LeBron James. Amen. But a billionaire reaching in his pocket and putting a dollar in the offering plate. In other words, he's given a dollar out of his billions. But Paul says God supplies according to his riches. In other words, God supplies your need without measure in proportion to his riches. And let me tell you, God is rich. He's richer than rich. All the silver, all the gold, and the cattle of a thousand hills belong to him. God got plenty and he'll give you what you need according to his riches. And the third thing, the third thing we want to make note of is that God supplies us with his presence. He supplies us with his presence. And Paul says, Jesus, God's supplies is by Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, the greatest supply that God gives us is his presence. Where would we be? What would we do without the presence of God? He promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And thank God he's with us right now in his presence of the Holy Spirit. And he will be with you until the end. And let me tell you, it's a wonderful feeling to have the presence of the Lord with you. Let me tell you, he's the great mediator. You know, he's sitting at the right hand of God right now making intercessions for us. And God does nothing without Jesus Christ. If one wants to get to God, they have to first go through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. If one wants their needs met by God, they have to first go through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the one who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins. And let me tell you, God loves his only begotten son so much that he'll supply the needs. For the one who loved God, the key, the key to having your needs met. You got to first go through 
Jesus Christ. You, you can put all your trust in God. That he will supply your need. Uh, whatever the need, the need may be, God will, he will supply it. But uh, there's one thing you got to remember, God may not supply all your needs. Right this moment, God may not supply all your needs in this life. What you really need may not be supplied till you get home as a child, as a child of God. We do suffer, suffer and die. God does not always step in and spare our lives. In the new heaven, when we all get to heaven, all our needs God will supply. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Now, I don't know just what you need, but God knows. Yes, He knows. He shall. I know He will supply your needs. Supply your needs. You need the presence, presence of the Lord. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I said there's a difference between want and need. What one wants is not always what they need. With their trust, their trust in God, their attitude, their appetite, always won and can be changed. It can be changed from always wanting to accepting uh, what God has for them. Uh, now I don't know, but somebody may want a new house, but God shall uh, provide the need. Somebody may want a new car, but God shall supply the need. Somebody may want a new suit, a new dress, new pair of shoes, but God shall supply the need. God always supplies the need. The presence, presence of the Lord Every second, every minute, every hour Yes, you do, yes, you do And before I leave you, let me leave this with you When you needed, needed someone to die for your sin God supplied, He supplied your need. He sent His only, His only Son to die on the cross. Yes, He did. When you needed, needed someone to always, always be with you. He supplied. He supplied your need when Jesus rose, rose from the grave, got on a cloud, went on back to heaven, 
He left His Holy, Holy Spirit with you as a child, as a child of God. We do suffer, suffer and die, but now He's with you, with you always. Walking with you, uh, talking with you, uh, holding your hand. God always, always supplies, supplies your need. Has he done it? Is he doing it? Can he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. I know he will. Ain't he all right? Is the Lord all right? Is he all right with you? Let me hear you say yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For always supplying our needs. <laughs> Whatever you need, God's got it. And He will supply all your needs. God bless you today. I think I've said enough. I'm just glad that God supplies my needs. Daddy wanted to help me one time. He couldn't help me, but God supplied. Oh of my needs. He did it back then. He's doing it right now. And I want to thank him for it. I know the Lord <laughs> will make a way somehow. I don't ask him how he does it. That's why I say somehow. Some way, somehow. God always makes a way. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, He will. Ah! Uh... 
thank God that he supplies all of our needs. Where would we be? Where would we be if God was not supplying all of our needs? I don't know about you today, but I thank him for being that kind of God looking over all of my faults and supplying my needs.
Christian experience, letter of fellowship, or just as one escaping through the flame. In the presence of the Lord. That still small voice. Would you come right now? Come right now. If you're on television, bow down in front of the television set and say, Lord, receive me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Tomorrow might be too late. Tomorrow just might be too late. What do you need? your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, how we bless your name. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We pray now that you bless not only the gifts, but the givers in a special way. Lord, we pray now that you bless these gifts to be used for the purpose in which they were taken, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Reverend. Well, I understand you have had a few words, huh? Well, you know our pastor was saying. Yeah, just a few. Uh, Greater Golden Gate. I've come with a praise report. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I have my vision now. Hear me, hear me swimming ahead. I'm coming with a praise report to let you all know that your prayers work. Your prayers are working. Um, make this thing short. Um, when I came here, I had nobody's insurance. Of course, like I told you before, I have cancer and MS. But thanks be to God, I can no longer say that I don't have insurance. Uh, things are, you know, step by step. And uh, after meeting with my primary, thank God I got a primary now, uh, week before last, uh, and after doing some blood work, they, or uh, she is, you know, through my neurologist, uh, is going to prescribe me with medicine for this MS. Only have to take twice, not a month, but a year. No cost. Last word, I don't want to be too long, but I got to say this to make y'all laugh. Uh, 
after getting hooked up, hooked up with the Invest Society, I didn't even know that was in a such thing. They came out uh, this past week, and you know, they, they're going to give me a motorized wheelchair. But now, as, as the preacher said a while ago, I don't, wanna, I don't mean to burst anybody's joy bubble. I kept my mouth shut in front of that lady or those ladies, but I want to tell her so bad, I'm going to tell y'all. I thank God for it, but I ain't trying to use it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk. Did y'all hear me? I don't want to get too comfortable in this wheelchair. Matter of fact, I ain't comfortable now to let y'all know. You know, it got a cushion for it. I don't even put it in there because I don't have much, you know, uh, backside. So I don't want to be comfortable. Don't y'all laugh at me in this chair because I ain't in this thing to stay. I'm a country boy. I like hunting. I like fishing. And I can't do that in this chair. So to God be the glory. Thank you all. Brother Preacher, I'm a living witness. God share supply. Praise God. Father God, we just want to, I guess, back up exactly on what Reverend Gaines was just saying. We have so much to be thankful for, don't we? He has a blessing. He has things to be thankful for. Everybody in this sanctuary has something to be thankful for, don't we? Didn't our hearts burn? Thank you. God bless you, Reverend Randall. God bless you. Didn't our hearts burn? But we just want to thank God for the gifts that he gives us. Everything we have comes from God. And he's just asked for just a small, tiny little 10% portion. But I'm just going to stop by to tell you today, 90% with God is better than 350,000% if there's such a thing without him. I'm just going to tell you today. So, God, I just ask that you bless those who give. Bless those who had a heart to give. And as I always say, remind those that think for some reason they cannot afford to give back to you just a little bit what, they, what you've given to them. They can't afford not to. God, we ask you to multiply these blessings 100-fold for the betterment of the kingdom. As you leave the sanctuary, the deacons will have the plates at the door. And those on the um, online giving app, you can't outgive God. Try him with that. Test him. When he said he shall supply, that's an imperative. He's obligated to do what he said. Do you trust him? In Jesus' name, amen. this time we will take the service higher we will continue until the Lord's Supper all those who wish to uh, partake if you have not already received the elements just put your hands up and one of the deacons will come by it's also a good time at this time that if you must leave the time would be now 
That way we may continue on on this sacred ceremony. The blood of Jesus still works. I heard the, the song this morning. Put, raise your hand if you believe the blood of Jesus still works. And, and it's one of those things I don't have to believe it does. I know it does. And you know it does. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that blood. And once everybody's served, we will stand and uh, read our church covenant. Oh, what a privilege it is to call him my God. Thank you, Reverend Randall. That was such a blessing, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God. Our God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son that even though we did not love him in our actions, we hated him, yet he loved us so much that he chose us before the foundation of the world. He had to send his only begotten son that we may be washed in the blood of the lamb. That's what the significance of this time is. Has everybody been served? Looks like we have. And I believe our media team will have our, the words of the covenant on a monitor. May we stand? And read in unison. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions to religiously educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale of and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior, we further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feelings and Christian courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible 
unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. In Jesus' name. pray. Eternal God, our Father, we first of all say thank you for allowing us to see one more first Sunday. And now, Father, as we prepare to partake of these elements, we ask your blessings upon this bread that symbolizes your broken body, upon this drink that symbolizes your shed blood. And Father, we also add that will you forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings as we partake of this supper. We thank you for Jesus, and it is his name that we pray. Amen. the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took bread and wine and he blessed it and told them to divide it among themselves. He said that the bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Let us all eat in remembrance of Jesus.
and the cup likewise after supper, saying, This cup represents the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let us drink in remembrance of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Master, as we dismiss ourselves one from the other, we ask, Master, that you never dismiss your presence from us. Stay with us, go with us, stand by us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and for his sake, in everybody's head. 